equipping families without overwhelming them or you. This is kind of a, um, an amazing season of ministry that we've been living in and through and all the things that are happening in our personal lives and our professional lives and there's a lot of challenges and people just in general seem to be a little bit overwhelmed by what's going on and so I wanted to walk us through some of the things that we can do uh, to try to bring some calm and some simplicity not only into the lives of our families but our own lives as well so we seek to minister in this really interesting time so that's how we're going to be spending our time together I'll be honest it's really interesting for me to pre-record this and not be able to interact with you um, so I'll be looking forward to the discussion group that follows the teaching so we can have that interaction. But even so, I'm going to open with a few uh, open-ended questions. I'm just going to ask, and if you've got a piece of paper, you want to jot down some answers or uh, put something on your phone, you can. But just to think through um, kind of a state of where we're at right now. So here we go. Equipping families without overwhelming them or you. So first question, if you were going to finish this statement, so it's really not a question, but if you were going to finish this statement, families are... As you think of, of coming through the summer, as you think of stay-at-home orders, as you think of masking uh, rules, all of the things that are impacting the way we would normally do ministry, and you think about the families that you serve, if you had to finish this sentence, what are a couple words, phrases, thoughts, ideas you would write down? Families are. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. And you, can, of course, can keep adding to this as we go. So just because I'm moving on doesn't mean you have to stop thinking along this line. But the next one is, my church is. Uh, some of your churches are meeting, some of your churches are not. What does that mean for you? And those of you who have churches open for services, what does that look like, feel like? Um, are you running ministries for kids and families? Have you not? So when you think of all of that and finish this sentence, my church is. The next one is I am. So that's all about you. How are you feeling today? Where are you at right now? It might be different than 10 minutes ago. It'll probably be different than where you're going to be at the end of our time together this afternoon. And then the last thing that I want you to consider before we really dive in is this one, Jesus would. So in this environment, in this space, whatever the pressures are for you personally, for your church, for the families around you, uh, what are some things, if you could picture Jesus stepping into our lives right now, what would Jesus be doing? Jesus would. It's really good um, in, a, in a season of challenge to stop sometimes and think through these things, find a sort of a starting point of where you're at. And I think that will make the teaching today feel more applicable to you in your setting and something that gives you some action items um, as you move forward in ministry. So this verse from Jeremiah 6, 16 is a verse that um, has been on my heart since the very beginning of the new year. On January 2nd, I came across it. Uh, it really just jumped out to me and I've been uh, living with it since then, uh, and God just keeps bringing sort of a deeper and deeper understanding to me as we go. So I'm going to use this as our blueprint for our time today. I'll read it for all of us, but you can see the words there on the screen. It says, this is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look around. Ask for the old godly way and walk in it. Travel its path and you will find rest for your soul. How can we equip families by taking a cue from this verse in Jeremiah 6.16? Um, I have three words, they're E words, so hopefully they'll be easy to mem remember as you go forward. First one is evaluate. We're gonna stop and take a break. We sort of got a little glimpse of that um, as we started out our time together when I asked you to finish those sentences. Take a break, stop, and look around. So that's the piece of the verse from Jeremiah. We, we wanna um, take some time today to evaluate. Evaluate where life is, evaluate what's important, evaluate how we can best come alongside families and take care of ourselves in the process. The next one is empower. We want to map it out. So if you think in terms of a vacation, if you were actually going to take a break and go on vacation, you would spend some time mapping out what you want to do. You would go to the internet, you'd talk to some friends, you maybe uh, saw, saw a commercial on TV or something that gave you an idea of what you want to do on your break. So you'd map it out. Even if you were just going for a Sunday drive to see the fall colors, you would decide, I'm going to start at point A, I'm going to go to point B, and here's what's going to happen in between. So just taking some time to map it out. And in Jeremiah's words, ask for the old godly way, because we want to be about pointing people to Jesus and pointing people uh, to the kingdom. We need to actually go back to what it is that God's asking of us um, in our daily lives and in our ministry. And so that's always the best place to start when you're trying to map a new route for ministry. And let's be honest, friends, we're mapping a new route here. So we need certainly uh, to be empowered by taking some time to see what God thinks and what he says. 
And then the last is to engage. So again, if you were going on a trip, you decide you need to take a break, you'd map it out, and then you'd actually pack your bags and get ready to go. You decide what, what do you need on this journey with you? What are you gonna bring on the plane? What are you bringing in the car? What are you bringing on the train? Whatever your mode of transportation is, even if you're going for a bike ride or for a hike, you'd pick the right shoes, the right clothes, you might bring a snack, right? You always think through. So we'll get through all of these in more detail, but this is our little roadmap for where we're gonna go today. So let's start with the first one, evaluate. We wanna take a break. This is what the Lord says, stop at the crossroads and look around. God has effectively pressed the pause button for our churches. Um, in this season, as we live through this pandemic together, we've all gotten a chance to step back and not do things at the pace, um, at the same level that we've normally been doing that. And as much as we've done that in the church, our families have done that together as well. And so they have found um, different rhythms for life. And for many of them, probably healthier rhythms for life. And we need to pay attention to that because as we come back in and we start to gather people together, uh, what we don't want to do is load back onto them all the things that they were able to set aside. If they were able to clear some space, how do we help them still have that healthy space and make God and make church be a part of that? So that's a really important thing to stop, evaluate, take a break, look around. So we can press the pause button as we're uh, evaluating our own ministries and as we help families evaluate what's important to them by asking some questions. How is the pace of life? Or in our context, what's the pace of ministry? Right now, my guess is it's slower than it used to be. So you might have to think back to last winter and remember how a uh, church looked and felt like for you and compare it to now um, and just kind of get a read on it, right? How's the pace of life, the pace of ministry? What needs to change? As you think through where you are right now, the season that we come through, what changes do you want to hold on to? Maybe they've already been made in ministry and life, but what are they? Name those changes. What needs to stay the same? So there are some things that are constant in our lives. Being in God's word has to be a constant, right? So reminding people again of those basics of getting back to the heart of being in relationship with Jesus and in relationship with one another. And then what is missing? So is there something that you're still longing for, wishing, hoping to accomplish or do or give attention to in your life that you just haven't gotten to yet? Those are things that are good to cause uh, us to pause and pay attention. As we evaluate, as we take a break, as we stop at the crossroads and look around, we will see things and we will notice things. And our job then is to, um, is to wisely sift through it all, hold on to the things that are important and let go of the things that aren't. And we have the perfect season to help families do that and come alongside them in a way the church probably hasn't before. Um, and I think it's a really important role that we can take up. The next would be to empower. So once you get in there with families and you begin to hear from them where they're at, what they need, what their needs are, what their pressure points are, what their struggles are, you might actually want to call through the list of families that are in your care and touch base with them. How are you doing? What's been hard? What's been good? Find out what distance learning looks like for them if they have to do it. Find out if they're still trying to work from home. Find out if there's been a job loss. We can help people find and connect with Jesus, asking for that old godly way by studying things. So taking a look around, right? That stop, take a look around, ask for the old godly way. It's, it's, just, it's as simple as walking out in nature and seeing the beauty of the world around. It's studying God's word. It's studying um, where people are at in their lives. It's just really just paying attention, a concerted effort to pay attention to where God is showing up Help our families see that and help point it out for them so that they don't miss it. We can do it by listening, listening to one another, listening to God. In a season where many things feel contentious, um, there is power in just asking somebody, tell me why that's important to you. Let me hear your heart on that. Can you help me understand why? All of those questions communicate, I value you, I value where you're at, and I wanna know. Uh, what, what's going on for you so I can pray for you, so I can encourage you, so I can cheer you on. We empower people when we listen and God empowers us when we listen to him. So how well are we listening for God's voice? Where are we finding it in a way that we can hear it and pay attention? Serving, right? So a lot of the solution to uh, the sort of like heaviness around us is to just get out and help people. Lots of times we sit back, we wait for God to show up, and believe me, God will. 
He will show up in his timing. It's often not the timing that we want or that we crave. But in the meantime, we can do things for him, for the kingdom that are important. And that looks like serving. It's going to your neighbors. It's going to friends, to a teacher, to a coach. How can I help you? How can I lift you up in this time? And for us, for sure, as leaders in the church, it's how can we serve families the best? How can we serve children the best or youth the best, whatever our area of ministry might be? So as we're thinking about putting programs back on the schedule, we need to ask that question. Are we serving families by offering this ministry? Oftentimes the answer is going to be yes, but in this season, the answer may be no to some of those things and understanding your context will help you discern that. And then just simply being. I remember really well when I was in seminary years ago, um, being being on my way to go and spend a day with a, a friend who was really hurting and really struggling and she'd had significant loss in her life. And I wasn't sure how to come alongside that. And I met with my uh, spiritual director in seminary at the time. And I asked him, I'm like, what am, I, what am I supposed to say? How can I even help her? She's in so much pain. And he said to me, it, it's not gonna be what you said. It's gonna be that you're there, that you're being, that you're present. And sometimes, again, in ministry, we get wrapped up at saying and doing. We're good doers, right? Doing the right thing. Sometimes our families just need us to show up, just to be in their space and in their midst. So these are all different ways that we can empower ourselves as we serve, and we can empower the kids and the families that we serve by just really paying attention to what's going on, studying, listening, serving, and being. And then the last word I have for us today, engage, uh, which is to pack your bags, right? Get up and go, like do something, get moving. We wanna travel the path that God has set out before us because he has a promise for us. We're gonna find rest for our souls. So when we choose our destination and we head in that direction, good things are gonna come our way. So we can commit to this journey in the same way that you pack your bags, that you book a plane ticket, that you make plans, you get vacation from your employer and you're ready to go. And our families know this rhythm really well. In the same way that we commit to a vacation, we can commit to this journey with God. And the commitment has to be personal. We need to commit personally first. And that, that should be the place that we start all of our ministries and the personal relationship that I have with Jesus Christ. And if we haven't had time or haven't been spending time with him lately, how can we possibly hear his voice or know his heart for the people that he's entrusted to our care? So friends, make sure that you get that back front and center. If that's something that's kind of squeezed away from you or slipped out of your grip, go find uh, those scriptures that speak to you meet with people who can challenge you in your understanding of God's word so that we stay growing and thriving in our own faith so that then we can help others. And then as we call our families to the same thing, to personally commit to their relationship in Jesus Christ. And we know with kids, when we're doing ministry with children, the personal commitment is really the call of answering the gospel, which is really exciting when we get to be a part of that. We should commit to the journey expectantly. When you go on a vacation, most of the time you're expecting to have fun, right? You're expecting good weather. You're expecting to see something you haven't seen before. You're expecting to make memories or see people who are meaningful to you. You have expectations. And as we step into this journey with God and continue on the journey and we invite others to come with us, we should be teaching them to expect the same. Expect that God is gonna show up in your ministry. Expect that he's gonna show up in your personal life and teach your kids and families to do the same because he will, he's faithful, and he says that he's gonna be with us and that's really important. We should commit to the journey humbly, right? So as we're walking with Jesus to just know we're not perfect, we don't have all the answers, we might have been doing our homework on this whole COVID-19 thing, but we might be getting some things wrong. We have to remain open and teachable that God might reveal something to us or show us something. He might use a child to do that. He might use an adult to do that. But as we journey together, we want to be humble in the way that we're serving and the way that we're engaging a life of Christ.